In this video, we're going to do an example that I hope will illustrate uh, and reinforce some of the concepts dealing with expected value and variance related to joint random variables. Before we get into the example itself, however, I'd like to take a review of some of the concepts that were originally presented in our video on portfolio analysis. Specifically, this equation. It's a little bit intimidating, I think. It's, it's one of the big equations having to do with joint random variables. And what it says, we'll, we'll walk through it, is the variance of some quantity of x plus some quantity of y, x and y being the random variables, you add those, the variance of those two added together is equal to a squared times the variance of x. And just a quick review, why do we use this symbol for variance? Well, it's um, this, you might recognize the symbol itself as a symbol for standard deviation. And variance is the square of standard deviation. Standard deviation is the square root of a variance. So um, it's interchangeable. So this symbol means the variance of x plus b squared times the variance of y plus 2 times a times b times the covariance of x and y. Now, I want to point out something, I don't know, might have escaped your notice, uh, and, and try to simplify this equation a little bit for when we're dealing with specific circumstances. The thing I wanted to point out is this. If x and y are independent, these two random variables are independent of each other, then, well, the covariance is equal to 0. You all knew that. But it helps, I think, to simplify this equation quite a bit. So. If x and y are independent, covariance is equal to 0. Therefore, I use these three dots to mean therefore, we would have our, our equation would just be a squared times the variance of x plus b squared times the variance of y. Because this whole thing, if covariance of x, y is 0, which it would be, uh, correlation would also be 0 if they're independent. Let me just multiply this whole thing out, it becomes zero. So we'd have a squared times the variance of x plus b squared times the variance of y. It's that simple. In another circumstance, if if a and b are both equal to one, meaning we've got a single quanti quantity of the random variable x and a single quantity of y, then I'm going to write out the beginning of the equation again. Variance of x plus y, which is the same thing as saying a and b are both equal to 1, are equal to the variance of x plus the variance of y. So specific circumstances here, we can just say, oh, variance of x plus y is equal to the variance of x plus the variance of y if they're independent and we're t dealing with a single quantity of each. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. And really, this is a very simple equation. We say, oh, OK, if we're dealing with just two independent variables, we can just add together their variances, together the variance of, of the two of them combined. One more thing I wanted to point out. This is sort of a little bit of a separate concept here, but I think it's worth noting. If b is equal to 0, meaning essentially all we're really saying is variance of ax, we're just dealing with the variance of ax and no quantity of b. Variance of ax is equal to a squared times the variance of x. Now, reminder, I, instead of this symbol, I could just be writing var x. It just takes more time. And more space, and I write big. So variance of ax is equal to a squared times the variance of x. Now, I want to distinguish between when we have multiple, uh, uh, you know, several quantities of a single random variable like a x versus when we have multiple ran instance, multiple random variables running several different random variables, several different events. So here's the scenario. You and your friend are playing a betting game, a betting game I made up myself. So this is going to be a little bit of a strange example. You roll two dice and add the results together. So these are two six sided die add the results together, you can get anything between a 2 and a 12 in the, as far as the sum goes. You then subtract 7 from the sum of the numbers that are shown on the two dice and multiply the resulting number by the amount of the bet. So the bet we haven't defined yet. It could be anything. You and your friend could decide, mutually decide on whatever bet you want. 
So you take the sum of the two dice, subtract seven, and multiply it by the, the, the amount of the bet. You pay all negative amounts to your friend, and your friend pays all positive results to you. So I've given some examples here. We'll pretend you are you, and I'll be your friend. So we, get, we decided we're going to have a $5 bet, and we roll the, the roll of the dice. So you roll the dice, you get a three and a six. That means there's a nine. And then we take seven from nine, get two. Two times the $5 bet is $10 that I have to pay to you because it was a positive number. Here's another example. We, you roll a three and a three on a $20 bet. So $20 bet this time. And three plus three is six. Six minus seven is equal to negative one. Multiply the negative one times 20 means you, uh, uh, you have to pay me $20 because it was a negative number, negative result. And then lastly, roll of a five and a two on a $50 bet. Doesn't matter. It could be any amount of bet, but five plus two is seven. Seven minus seven is zero. So nobody's paying anybody. No money changes hands. Doesn't matter the size of the bet. All right, so that's the scenario. That's the game I made up. The questions are, we'll start with the first question. What are the expected value and the standard deviation on a single bet of $1? Now, I'm going to open up a spreadsheet here to show sort of a, the, the, the layout of this game. And, and hopefully this will help sort of make sense of the game if you didn't get it based on my sort of strange explanation. But here we have all the possible results. We're looking for the expected value and standard deviation on a single bet of $1. Most of you can probably guess the expected value here. This is a perfectly fair betting game. In other words, there's just as many results that are smaller than $7 as there are that are larger than $7. There's, and there, there's exactly equal probability of winding up below $7 or above $7 at, at the same ratios, you know, larger numbers. So it's a perfectly fair game. So you could actually kind of guess just right off the top of, of your head that the expected value is going to be zero. But we're going to go ahead and calculate it using a spreadsheet just as a reminder. I think, I suspect that some people will need a reminder of how to calculate uh, variance as well. And that's really what we're going to be doing here. So we have all the possible results, meaning not all the possible results in terms of saying 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 11, 12, but rather all the combinations from die 1 and die 2. So six combinations where we roll a 1 on die 1, you get every possibility on die 2. Same, we have six combinations where we have roll two on die one and then we have one two three four five and six on die two and goes down and you can guess you don't have to guess you can use probability techniques to say oh well we have six results for one six res six results for one six results for two therefore six times six is 36 total possibilities and that's indeed what we wind up with this is 36 possibilities the next column is the sum this is the sum of the two dice uh, pretty obvious. I'm just adding in adding, adding column A and column B. And then the payout is the sum minus 7. Maybe payout is not the right term. This is the multiple of the payout because we're going to have to factor in the, the bet. But in, in, for question 1, we're only looking at a single bet of $1, so it's really going to be the exact same thing. So this is what we care about. This is, kind of, this is our x. This is going to be our expected value since we don't have to multiply it by a bet at this point. Um, this is how we're going to calculate our expected value. And to do the to, to do a good job of calculating the expected value, we have to, we have to multiply the, I'm still using the term payout, times the probability of each event. By the way, I got the probability. There are 36 possibilities. Each one of them is equally likely. So the probability of any one possibility is just 1 divided by 36. So it's going to be equal all the way across. We get the expected value by multiplying the payout by the probability and that's going to give us, and then we add all those up, and it's going to give us the expected value of the payout. So let's take a look at what that would be. Hmm. That gave me more than I wanted. Well, what the heck. As you can see, the calculation here is just adding up column G. And so we get a payout of expected value of zero. Interestingly, it didn't give me as much as I wanted in terms of columns, but I'm going to leave it like that. So now, how do we calculate variance? Well, I sort of gave the game away. I showed you what the variance was, but you might not know how to calculate it. I suspect you do, though, but let's just do it anyhow. Variance, if you'll remember, is we take the expected value of x, we say, and then we take each individual value of x, subtract the expected value 
square it, multiply it by the probability, and then sum it up. That's our variance. So that's what we're going to do. We have to get the, so we're going to add a column here. Supposedly, if that column exists, oh, right. Where we, we're doing just that. We say x, meaning the payout, minus the expected value, which is up here, squared times the probability. And you can see that's exactly what we get. The d column minus the expected value squared times the probability column e. And when we add all those up, we get the variance that you already saw. There it is. The sum of column i is 5.83. And I threw the standard deviation in there because that's what the question asks. It asks for the standard deviation, which is just the square root of the variance. Fairly straightforward stuff. You learned this a long time ago. But now, here's where the, the, I think the, the illustration gets interesting. I hope it's interesting anyhow. I'm going to read questions two and three together, and I hope you see the distinction. Question two is, what are the expected value and standard deviation? Ooh, I'm not sure I have the grammar right in the, these questions, but you know what? This isn't a grammar lesson, so we're just going to roll with it. What is, what are, the, what are the expected value and standard deviation on 100 bets of $1? It didn't sound right coming off my tongue, but expected value and standard deviation of 100 bets of $1 Question number three is, what are the expected value and standard deviation on a single bet of $100? Question I want you to ask yourselves. But the answer is going to be the same for questions two and three. Well, actually, let me be a little bit more specific. I'm going to just tell you the answer to the first part of both of them. The expected value, this, as I said before, this is a fair, um, this is a, this is a fair bet. Equal probability of you winning, me winning, I'm your friend. Uh, and so it's not really going to matter whether we make a one, 100 bets of $1 or one bet of $1 or a single bet of $100. Expected value is always going to be zero. Your expected value, my expected value, also zero. So let's talk about standard deviation. Do you think that the standard deviation on 100 bets of $1 is going to be the same as on a single bet of $100? Think about that. Do you think it's going to be the same? And I also want you to think about your justification. Why do you think it will be the same or not the same? You could pause the video if you wanted. But anyhow, let's go ahead and solve. Let's think about what are the expected value and standard deviation on 100 bets of $1. Well, what is 100 bets of $1? It means we're actually rolling the, we're, we're rolling the dice, the two dice together, a hundred times with a bet of one dollar riding on each roll and then we take the sum of all of that you know I win some you win some certainly a bunch of times we rolled a seven and we're asked for the standard deviation of the final sum the final amount what is that that is a hundred different events independent events as well right that's just saying I mean, obviously the roll on the roll on one the sum on one roll is going to have no influence on the roll before or after it. That's silly. Obviously, independent events. It's 100 independent events, 100 $1 bets. Let me go back to what we talked about here. What we're dealing with, we said, okay, we're dealing with independent events. And now we're just dealing with a $1 bet every time. So what's A and B? A, whatever. One dollar. We're really. This is sort of a funny case because we're not looking for the variance of a x plus b y. We're looking for the variance of x plus x plus x plus x plus x plus x plus x a hundred times. And that is just the variance of. We said when they're independent events, when when x and y are independent, we say variance of x plus y is equal to variance of x plus variance of y. And that holds true a hundred times over as well. This is just variance of x plus x plus x plus x plus x. That's just x plus x plus x plus variance of 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 x a hundred times. And we know what the variance is. The variance of x, the variance of a one dollar bet, is five point eight three. So we're just adding that together a hundred times. So that you know, 
basic definition of multiplication, that ends up being 100 times the variance of x. So, oops, doing things I don't want to do. Let's try that again. So, we already did expected value, so I'm just going to do variance here. Oh, actually, I want standard deviation. Okay, so the standard deviation is going to be equal to the square root of 5.83, because remember that was our variance, times 100. Okay. Technology, work with me. And, okay, we'll go ahead and solve this just for the heck of it. So we'll say equals square root of 583, because I did that math in my head. Amazing, isn't it? And we get 24.15, about. So that's our standard deviation on 100 bets of $1. What is the expected value in standard deviation on a single bet of $100? All right, moment of truth. We'll see who was wrong, right and who was wrong. What is a single bet of $100? Well, that is actually the variance of 100 times x. We have a single random variable, a single event, times 100. We bet $100 that time. And so we can use this equation, a squared times the variance of x. And a is $100. Hoping this is going to work the first time. Hey, look at that. Now I'm going to bring up my spreadsheet again just to complicate things. So the square root of a single bet on, oh, sorry, the square root of the variance is going to be the square root of a is now 10,000, excuse me, I'm sorry, a squared is 10,000 times 5.83. So this is going to be something similar. This is equal to the square root of 583, 241.45. And this is really relevant to portfolio analysis. This is why you know this, this equation comes up so much, this, this equation up here in red. This is the difference between you know, making, well, I mean, as, as defined by this example itself, the difference between making 100 independent bets versus making one big bet. And that's why the variance is so much bigger. If you put all your eggs in one basket, uh, you're st you're gonna, there's going to be a lot more variance. There's going to be a lot more chance to make a lot of money or, or lose a lot of money. So there's a lot more risk, a big variance associated with, say, buying um, 100 share, uh, shares of a certain stock versus diversifying and getting a whole lot of very, um, a whole lot of stocks. You know, like one share of each stock. Uh, obviously, we're not going to have a situation where we have they're all completely independent. They're not. But you can understand the difference in the variance um, based on spreading your bets around versus making one big bet.